Hi, my name's David. I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome to the channel. I have a question for you. What would happen if you put the RF output from a transceiver into a Tesla coil? How well would that Tesla coil radiate and how far would the signal go? Well, I have tried it and the results have been quite surprising. I've set up to do the experiment on the 40 meter amateur band, which is using a frequencies from about 7 megahertz to 7.3 megahertz. And of course, if you're going to try this at home, you need to be a licensed amateur in the uh, country where you are. Otherwise, you could fall foul of the authorities. So I've set up a simple uh, test. I I built a coil with some modifications to make this uh, work a little easier. And let's see how it all came together. So here's the test coil setup. We have a two turn primary and around about a 40 turn secondary. And the ring you see, copper ring at the top of the secondary is actually a capacitive coupling to ground. It's a broken ring. So there's no, um, uh, no continuous turn there. And I tune it, tune the coil to resonance by moving the um, white plastic bottle up and down. Inside, it slides in inside the coil. So that's how the tuning's done. And just uh, trying to tune a device like this, um, uh, just having an open uh, coil is very difficult because stray capacitance completely detunes it uh, to a frequency you're trying to work with. So this is the arrangement I came up with and it seems to work uh, pretty well actually. So if we just take a look how this is coupled, well to get a reasonable SWR of about 1.2 to 1, which is the best I can do, I'm uh, feeding the RF from the connector there through a, uh, a air variable capacitor. And that seems to work quite well and I can adjust that capacitor uh, which makes a small difference to the tune frequency, but a large difference to the SWR. So uh, around for 40 meters, I found that capacitor needs to be around about, uh, probably about 100 picofarads. And here we've got the high tension correction. The, uh, we've got the RF coming in, um, and I'm only using a few watts, probably three watts in this test. And that's going through a, a, um, an old SWR uh, meter, which gives me an indication of um, whether I've got a good uh, coupled signal, a good low SWR, because I don't want to overstress my transmitter. This uh, Mountain topper uh, three band uh, radio by LNR Precision, and that is uh, fed by this uh, 12 volt battery, lithium battery. I've got a key also if I need to use it, and some headphones to listen to the signal. And that's the setup. So, first of all, I have to make sure things are tuned, so I'll just use my uh, Nano VNA and I'll use that to check the SWR. So just stand by for that. So we're getting uh, about a oh, 1.1 to 1 SWR at 7.024 megahertz, which is in the CW part of the band. So we're going to go with this and I will set the radio to the same frequency and uh, see how we get on. We're now connected to the coil. So uh, we have the frequency in there. I'm just going to uh, transmit my call sign as CQ. 
the frequency is clear and you'll hear what's been transmitted on the uh, headset. Okay, I think you're getting the idea. So um, now we're going to check by looking at a um, SDR a receiver. Um, probably we'll try one in Alberta, which is uh, probably about uh, 500 miles away, and see if we can hear the signal. So let's move to the computer. So right now I'm looking at my uh, SDR which is in Alberta and I'm not seeing anything so I'm putting 3 watts into the coil and I'm not at the moment seeing anything at all so what I'm going to do is go and clip on a, a ground wire and see if adding a ground to the base of the coil makes a difference clipped on a ground and that just runs into my electrical socket so it's working through my uh, home electrical ground okay back to the SDR and you can just hear it it's a very weak signal but you can hear it it's not showing well on the uh, waterfall but it is there There it goes again. So that's pretty impressive. Of course, now we have radiation from the wiring going to the to, to the uh, mains. So here's what happens when I plug the transmitter into my half-wave NFED antenna on the exterior of the shack you can clearly hear the signal and you can just see a trace on the uh, waterfall and we're getting about S7, S8 keep in mind that when I was using the Tesla coil it's indoors I have a steel roof and steel doors so it does affect the way the signal is getting out. In fact, I suspect there's quite a bit of attenuation. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I sure did. So let's just summarize what, what we've learned. We put about three watts into a slightly modified Tesla coil. And with just the coil, I didn't really get a detectable signal in Alberta. However, I will say on one previous occasion I did. And in that instance, connecting or disconnecting the ground cable didn't make any difference to the signal strength. The other uh, strange thing is that connecting or disconnecting the ground lead does not make a difference to the tuning, which kind of surprised me a little. Anyhow, we put that in, propagation, probably not the best, um, but not bad. I didn't detect anything on the SDR, um, we just test the core. However, when I connected the ground lead, um, there was definitely a signal there, and probably around about S5. So when I compare that with my uh, shacks, half-wave NFED antenna, which is at about 20 feet. Uh, that radiated a little better, uh, radiated to about S7. However, I should add that uh, I'm in a building with a steel roof and a steel door, and that is like, um, almost like being in a bit of a Faraday cage. So I wouldn't expect that the signal coming from the bench here so will it be anywhere close to what I would get from a proper outdoor antenna? Anyway, I think the next step is to take this out into the field and run another test and see how we do outdoors. I would expect it to be somewhat better. I might have to improvise a ground 
but we'll try it and see and that will be the subject of the next video anyway if you enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe to the channel because that will help um, boost the algorithm and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time have a good one